the What To Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they love for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next great read, then the show. Hi, Stella. Welcome to What To Next podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I have been writing in notebooks for uh, 10, 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I finally took the leap to really try to make it a real career mm-hmm. in about 2015, 2016. And that was, um, you know, a process learning your craft and sending queries and writing drafts. Um, and this is my first series launching with Julie this year. I'm really excited. Oh my gosh. So we got to talk about it, but like, what was the process? Like, you know, were you a romance reader beforehand or like, like how does it, what do you decide like to write this kind of genre? Like how yes. did, what's the seed of like, you know, the, the actual seed where did it start? Yes. Um, so I have always been an avid romance reader. And I remember when I was a teenager and my mom would take us to like the secondhand store and I would get stacks of like old historical romance books, Harlequins, and I would just devour them. Um, and my mom was an English teacher and she saw it as reading is reading. Um, so she would just let us go. And I remember in high school, my English teacher said, um, Stella, your vocabulary is so high. And she asked me what I was reading. And I was kind of embarrassed to say to my English teacher, who I thought was very much more into the classics, um, that I've been reading a ton of romance. And she said, well, just keep reading it because it's it's showing it's doing great. Um, so yeah, romance has always been my genre. I'll dip out for like a thriller once in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I scare myself when I get back into romance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I understand. I take thrillers as a palate cleanser. Every so often, I just need a murder. The husband did. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah a good so mystery. Pie. Yes, a good scare, and then get back into the romance, and then go back to romance. And even though like romance actually has like dark romance, it has romantic suspense. There's like a whole genre for it. So totally, totally, <laughs> you could just stay there, or I'll bounce between like historical and then back to modern, and I'll yeah. I'll go between those two a lot. Yeah. And what kind of historicals do you go to? Like, do you do Regency or you like some other, you know, I will do anything. I will go all the way back um, to like um, Regency, um, Vikings. Um, I binged Bridgerton, of course, like everybody did. Um, Yeah, I'll read kind of anything as long as the heroine is like a strong, independent slash ambitious, which could be hard to do, uh, you know, 200, 300, 400 years ago. I'll still read it. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. So we got to talk about the first, the last first, last first kiss. (laughs) All right. So what is the other one of Hedge? Okay. So last first kiss uh, is my second chance forced proximity romance. Uh, Years after Charlotte is widowed, she's focused really on moving forward in life, but is not ready for romance again until her gorgeous boss, Caleb, makes it very clear she is his the one. Uh, And he'd always felt like she was the one that got away from him. Um, And just when he starts to convince her to give them a chance, an issue from his past sort of rears its head again and threatens any future that they can have together. So that's that's the pitch for Last First Kiss. And then actually the second book in the series, Battle of Hearts, is coming out in April. So I'm very excited. Oh, my gosh. So, so we got to talk about like, because you're coming out with like really close releases, like you're they're all coming out to this year. So you I'm assuming you wrote them all together years so- ago. Like, what was <laughs> the would, what was one the would process? think <laughs> <laughs> I, I had finished First Kiss was my first novel I ever finished and it's been through several iterations to include once I got my publisher we made some more changes and um, they really liked the family that I established in this book you'll mm-hmm. meet the parents and the brothers and so then I started they said could you maybe do some um, additional books and make it a series and I thought sure so then I really got into this idea of these brothers and these strong alphas. And so each um, book is one of the siblings stories and they are all able to be read standalone, but um, you'll kind of get more of the family feel uh, through the series. And so much, and I guess the early reviews have been pretty good that um, they just signed me for two more books in the series. So we're oh going to keep the Maguires going. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Um, 
All right. I got a question. So yeah. you, you probably have to, did you plot it out the books in the series or had like an outline idea? Like here are the tropes for each one of them, or here's the per- character personalities, you know? Um, Cause I did. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm well, I'm a bit of a panther um, at heart and I don't do extensive outlines, but they needed to know sort of um, the tropes in sort mm-hmm. of maybe the main character. So like Rory in book two is this very, serious older brother SWAT officer um has a little bit to prove um the third brother Connor is like very playful and the jokester but also police officer and then the fourth brother is also kind of quiet and stoic a former Navy SEAL um so I had to plot that out and then sort of a brief synopsis on what each book would be and then they just let me go uh which I really found um perfect for me uh I think because I would change too many things so if I said it was going to go one way, I'd get bored with that and I'd end up changing it. Um, <laughs> that's my process. Awesome. And so you've been on the writing cave, I'm assuming, for the past few years, like just. Yes, <laughs> I was cranking those books. So the first four are completely done and in the can um, as like, obviously, Last First Kiss is out. Battle of Hearts is out next month. Um, and then book two and or book three and four are also done. And I'm in the middle of drafting book five now. So I tend to work well under pressure Mm -hmm. um, and better with deadlines. Uh, That really forces me to get in my butt in the seat and write. Um, That's crazy. That's great. Honestly, I think that's a really cool cool thing, like to understand your writing style and how it works. Because a lot of times, like, you know, first draft, the first book, you're just, you have no deadlines. You kind of like, yeah, you're flying with the seat of your pants and you're trying to figure out. And it might be a shock to when you get traditional published that you have all these deadlines and all these different people are involved in this process that the book starts being your own and starts being a group offer, you know? Yes. And I think, um, I just went into it embracing that and recognizing these people are professionals. They've been doing this for decades and let the book change, learn as much as I can, and then go from there. But if you are holding on too tight or too rigid about, no, this is how it needs to be done. I think you can actually lose a better story and being stubborn about um, they say, you know, kill your darlings and our words are so precious to us, but I just really embraced it and thought, I'm just going to learn what I can. I've learned so much and I like love this writing process with my publisher. They're amazing. So it's been great. Awesome. And since book two is coming out next month, tell us a little, a little pitch for it. Just, or just like the tropes, like which just tropes the tropes are? you're yeah. going to love bodyguard, fake relationship. Um, she's dragging this hot SWAT officer around town, pretending he's her boyfriend and they both start catching some feelings. So it's a fun one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, we're not going to catch feelings, but okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Battle of hearts. Exactly. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> awesome. All right. So tell us like, um, you mentioned you read romance and stuff like that. What kind of romance are you reading while you're writing or are you not reading romance and that's okay? Too? Yeah. It's really hard for me to read romance when I'm writing. So I probably would pop into a thriller or I'm not even really reading. I'm just writing to stay focused. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I did have like a couple books that I highly recommend yep. and it, it's funny, we we're talking about sort of the darker side and, and I would put pen pal into the darker pen pal by, um, JT Kessinger. Yep. I would put that in the darker side and I feel like some books might make you blush. Some books might make you fan yourself. And this is definitely spicy and might do that. Um, and I wouldn't want to ruin any of the elements to it. Just know that like, if you enjoyed Verity, you will love Pen Pal. And that's all I can say about it. It's so good. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another author that I love is T.L. Swan. And I started with The Stopover when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And then I was waiting, you know, six months to a year for each next book. And it was driving me insane. Uh, but I was ready for them. And uh, The Stopover is just a great, they have a great meet cute. Um, you know, they don't see each other for like, I think another year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he ends up being her new boss, which is always a great trope in a romance. Yes. We love this. And he's a billionaire. So that helps. <laughs> <God bless. laughs> and then the last one that I jotted down that I loved so much was the Megan Quinn, uh, Not So Meet Cute, which was just a fantastic title. 
And it was a not so meet cute, which I also found fantastic. Another fake dating, which I tend to love, I guess. Uh, and they were very much sort of, this is just a business deal, almost didn't care for each other, each other. But the banter between them was so fun that I just, I think I read that book in a day. Gosh, I love these recommendations and yay. <laughs> <laughs> they were all good. They were all good. So Stella, tell us where you can find me online. Uh, so you can find me at Stella Holt Books on TikTok. Instagram, Facebook page. I'm on Goodreads and uh, my website is stellaholt.com. Thank you, Stella, for being on the show. Thank you so much. I had a great time. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatyourrenextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Remix podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libra FM for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code What to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the US. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.